Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Recently I made a video about the best British TV series for learning English and today I'm going to do something similar but with British films. However, I'm not going to talk about all of the mainstream films that you might have already experienced in your own country. I'm going to try and show you some lesser known films that I think could really help you improve your English. Most of these are my personal favourites. Not all of them were necessarily massive when they came out, although many of them were, but they're films that I really, really enjoyed. Films that show British culture, many aspects of British culture. So we'll start off with films or genres that are suitable for a beginner level, move on to pre-intermediate and then intermediate to advanced. I do think that a lot of British films show a very perfect view of Britain, a view that isn't necessarily realistic. So I've included some films that show a more realistic view of Britain and films that show a variety of accents as well. It's one of my top tips for improving listening. I've said it before many times. If you want to be able to understand everyone, then it's important that you listen to a variety of accents. So when it comes to watching films in order to improve your English, it can be really hard to find the right one for you. You've got to find something that you are interested in, you've got to find something that's at your level, and you've also got to find something that will provide educational value. A lot of you aren't based in the UK, so how can you gain access to these British films, especially some of the lesser known films that I'm going to recommend? Well, there is a solution. I highly recommend NordVPN, who have kindly sponsored this video. A VPN hides your location, allowing you to improve security, but also, importantly, allowing you to overcome geographical restrictions. So by using NordVPN, you can unlock access to these entertainment providers. They provide double data encryption for increased anonymity. There is no data logging, and it's even available in China. There is 24-7 customer support and a 30-day money-back guarantee. They've given me a special offer to pass on to you. You can get 70% off NordVPN. That's only $3.49 per month. That is very little when you consider all of the benefits that having a VPN will give you. You can also get an additional month free by using my link nordvpn.com lucy or you can just use my code lucy. The link and the code are in the description box. Okay, let's start with films that are more suitable for beginners, but these films are enjoyable for everyone. The first one, oh, this film is so good. It is Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. <laughs> I wonder if you've heard of Wallace and Gromit before. They were absolute favourites of mine, but this film was particularly fantastic. It's a stop motion film, so I think the characters are made of plasticine and they take years and years to make each film. The film itself is a work of art. Wallace and Gromit are a man and his dog, and they live in a village where there is an annual giant vegetable competition. <laughs> It's so British, I can't even tell you. <laughs> This does genuinely happen in our villages. However, there is a giant rabbit eating the giant vegetables and the villagers are not happy and Wallace and Gromit help them out. Now, this film is fantastic because yes, it is aimed at children. So the English is quite simple, not overly simple, but it's quite simple. However, there are lots of hidden jokes in there. So a lot of really good children's films have secret hidden jokes, naughty jokes for the parents. And this one is full of that. I remember watching this with my grandparents um, and they were roaring with laughter. It is one of my happiest memories with my granddad. Oh, uh, Wallace. Mr. Wallace. Mm. <laughs> Wait, is this all of him? Oh, uh, just one left. Huh? Okay, let's move on to the next one. I did say that I was going to recommend slightly more obscure films. And this one is great for anyone who really enjoyed Mary Poppins. I imagine you already know about Mary Poppins and that is a great one to watch in English if you are at a beginner level. However, there is another film that is very, very similar to Mary Poppins, which is absolutely fantastic. And it is called 
bed knobs and broomsticks and this was another childhood favourite. Now this is set during World War II and some children, three children, are evacuated to a lady's house and it turns out that she is training to become a witch. Now interestingly, the lady who plays Mary Poppins was originally asked to play the role of this wannabe witch but she actually turned it down because she didn't want to be typecast. If an actor is typecast, it means they are repeatedly assigned the same role, they're always playing the same character. Julie Andrews later changed her mind, but the leading lady, Angela Lansbury, had already been cast, so it was too late. Now this is an older film, it was released in 1971, so some of the accents are a bit dated, but you've got received pronunciation, and Cockney amongst many others. Like people! Nonetheless, we must see the king on an urgent personal matter. Please lead the way. Hello, future Lucy here. <laughs> so since filming this video, I've actually been doing a little bit of thinking about bed knobs and broomsticks, and I don't think that this is a beginner film. Um, some of the language is quite complex, actually. Some of the dialects they use. So by all means, watch this film and enjoy it because it's a fabulous film, but don't feel disappointed if you don't understand absolutely everything or if you end up with quite a few questions about the language used. The last of the children's films that I'm going to recommend, you might know this one because this was a big box office hit. It is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And again, this is set in World War II. And again, it's children who've been evacuated. They're evacuated to the countryside into a big house and they find a wardrobe which leads to the mystical land of Narnia. I find the speech in this film to be very, very clear. The children speak with received pronunciation, um, but there is a wide variety of accents throughout the film. Look at my fur. You couldn't give me ten minutes warning. I would have given you a week if I thought it would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's move on to pre-intermediate. With these films, if you are struggling to understand a film, if you're finding it very exhausting, I would highly recommend the method of watching something twice. This is what I used to do when I was learning Spanish. I used to watch a film the first time with subtitles and then the second time without subtitles. It's tedious, but... I was really bored of not understanding the whole story. Pick up as much as you can the first time with those subtitles and then the second time around it's almost a big confidence boost because you remember so much and it shows you that you know you've really learned a lot by watching it once and you're learning even more by watching it again. Now the first genre I recommend for pre-intermediate is romantic comedies. <laughs> so one kind of lesser known, well I guess it's a bit older now, but one rom-com that I fell deeply in love with when I was younger was Bend It Like Beckham. So this film is about football, but <laughs> I was never interested in football or ball games or sports or anything like that when I was younger. I think one of my mum's friends said, you have to watch this film. So ugh, I watched it and ugh, it's so good. It's about an 18 year old girl. She's the daughter of British Indian Sikhs and she makes friends with Kira Knightley. It turns out that they're both really good at football, but Jess, the main character, finds it hard to prove to her very conservative parents that actually this Western sort of career path is a good idea for her. There are a lot of gender stereotypes in this film, cultural stereotypes, but it's a really good watch. And I would say very wholesome. It also features a very prominent British accent, which is the Indian British accent, as well as Cockney slash estuary, which is what Keira Knightley speaks with in the film. Well, and so she's wearing baby pink now. Stupid cow. I had matching accessories and everything. Oh, mom, do I have to go shopping again? Huh? My mother chose all my 20 Now, I said I was going to talk about lesser known films, but I just can't resist just grouping a load of fantastic rom-coms into one section, Richard Curtis films. Richard Curtis just makes the most incredible British rom-coms. So I'm quickly going to recommend them to you because I think you'll love them. I absolutely love them. They are feel-good films. Most of them are based in London. You've got Notting Hill, Love Actually, the three Bridget Jones films, a really good one, which I can't watch again. I've just watched it once. It is About Time. 
It's about a man with the ability to time travel, but what he does in different times of his life impacts the future. And I found it too emotional. I watched it in the cinema and I had to go to the toilet crying. <laughs> oh, but if you need a good sob, a good cry, then I highly recommend it. I mentioned the Bridget Jones films. The woman who plays Bridget, Renee Zellweger, she is actually American, but she does a pretty damn good RP accent. And I would say my ultimate favorite Richard Curtis film is Four Weddings and a Funeral. We watched that the other day. It is glorious. You'll love it. <laughs> we also have another one, which is called Shakespeare in Love, and it stars Gwyneth Paltrow, and it's kind of an imagined version of events where Shakespeare falls in love whilst writing Romeo and Juliet. Another recommendation for sort of pre-intermediate level isn't actually a rom-com, it is just a com. <laughs> a comedy, we don't call it com. It is Hot Fuzz and we watched this the other day. It's by Simon Pegg, I'm going to recommend him again later on in this list. It is hilarious, it's set in the West Country, so we've got a real Southern British English accent, the West Country accent, as well as Simon with a London accent. And it shows two policemen, two very different policemen, dealing with a series of murders. It's very, very good. I love that it's set in it. Well, it's a town, not a village. I love that it's set kind of in the countryside, not in London. So many films are based in London and it's really refreshing to have something based outside of London. I mean, in development. Where George Merchant secured permission to build his dubious mansion on Norris Avenue. So, maybe they were all accidents. Oh, people have accidents every day. Now let's move on to historical or period dramas. Now these are still in pre-intermediate, although sometimes the vocabulary is quite niche but the actors tend to speak more slowly and clearly in these dramas. One really great one is Belle. It's quite interesting. It's a very different take on your standard period drama. The majority of the film is spoken with an RP accent. In this film, a British naval officer has an illegitimate child with an enslaved African woman. He brings her back to England. And it's actually inspired by the 1779 portrait of Dido Elizabeth Bell. It's a really good film. It's heartbreaking to see how Bell is treated, but I thought it was a really different take on just your standard period drama. I remember my father's eyes. They were kind, gentle, a little like yours. Mine. Another one which is also quite different and is also very relevant. Anyone who is lacking confidence while speaking, it's The King's Speech. It stars Colin Firth as a future king who is struggling to cope with a stammer and he works with an Australian speech and language therapist. It really is a great film and it's perhaps something that you might be able to relate with on some levels. You trick me. Physical exercises and tricks are important, but what you're asking will only deal with the surface of the problem. The last genre in pre-intermediate is horror. And I would say that horror is normally pre-intermediate because usually there is slightly less dialogue. A fantastic one is 28 Days Later. It's a Danny Boyle film. I love Danny Boyle. He also did Slumdog Millionaire. And this film shows the breakdown of society after a virus, very relevant, <laughs> a highly contagious virus is accidentally released. It's a horror film, so it is hard to watch at times, but I love an apocalyptic or dystopian film. Omelette! You prepared a feast, Jones. Honor of our guests, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we have a comedy horror next, which is actually sort of taking the mickey, making a joke of, the 28 Days Later film, but in a nice way. It's another one by Simon Pegg, who did Hot Fuzz. It's called Shaun of the Dead because it's actually mimicking Dawn of the Dead, which was very similar in some ways in concept to 28 Days Later. Again, we have flesh-eating zombies, but it's a funny horror film. I told you that over the years, Philip's been quite unkind to me. Well, you weren't always the easiest person to live with. Mum, he chased me around the garden with a bit of wood. Well, you did call him a you-know-what. And the last one, and I would actually say that this one is intermediate or higher, 
Um, it's called Attack the Block. The reason I would consider this one to be slightly more difficult or challenging is because there's such a variety of accents. The film shows a teenage street gang in South London who have to defend themselves against alien invaders. <laughs> but the street gang, most of them speak multicultural London English. This dialect is very common, it's quite unique, and it's quite new as well. If you look into it, it's really interesting to see how it's developed. I've got no credit, nine. Jump call everybody, fam. Pray someone calls back. This is too much madness to explain in one text. Let's move on to intermediate and above. And for this, I have just dedicated drama. And for this, I have picked three of my favourite British drama films. They are all very different. One is strictly RP. One is multicultural London English. And the last one is actually Liverpudlian. So Scouse, the Scouse accent. Let's start with the RP one. I would say this is one of my favourite films, favourite British films. It's called An Education and it stars Kerry Mulligan. And it's about a very beautiful young girl who is swept off her feet. So she is seduced by an older gentleman. She's lived a very privileged, very sheltered life. Uh, her parents are very overbearing, very strict. And he shows her a good time. But there is another side to it. It's a brilliant film. It never got as much critical acclaim as I thought it deserved. I also think it contains a really important lesson. Let me know what you think about that if you watch it. It's set in the 60s as well, so it's really lovely to see kind of 1960s Britain. You know who's with Jenny? Paris. You can't buy them here. You never bought them yourself? No, I never. Oh, shut up, you stuck up carrot. Now let's talk about my multicultural London English recommendation. Now, this film astounded me when I was a teenager. I absolutely loved it. I watched it over and over again. I'm sure you can imagine I lived quite a sheltered, privileged life. So this kind of opened my eyes. It's called Kidulthood. It's a drama that follows the lives of several teenagers who live in West London. And it was written by Noel Clarke, who is a big favourite of mine and he stars in it as well. I think he's fantastic. You follow the teenagers as they engage in crime and just have a really difficult and challenging time. It's really eye-opening and it shows a realistic other side to London. Britain and London isn't all beautiful countryside and glitz and glamour. There is a very real other side to it. I'll tell them to add that when I come in. Hey, check your cameras, man. Nisha, would you call the police, please? This young man has taken this hat and is now causing a commotion. Is that all he's taken? Yeah. The last one is a slightly older film. It's one that my mum recommended to me. And it is, I think it was released in 1983. And it's called Educating Rita. And it stars one of my favourite actresses, Julie Walters. She plays a working class hairdresser from Liverpool who is bored of her everyday life. She feels pressured to have a baby. She doesn't see her career going anywhere. So she decides to enrol in university, into an open university. The open university in the UK is a distance learning university and her tutor is Michael Caine, none other. And he's a bit of a drinker. He's just a bit bored with his own life as well. They form a great friendship. So she studies English literature and at first her technical ability for the subject is limited by her lack of education, but her enthusiasm helps her overcome this. I'm not going to tell you any more because there's more to the story, um, but I think it's a really, really good one. Lynn. I'm coming in, aren't I? It's that stupid bleeding handle on the door. You want to get it fixed? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I meant to. So that's it for my recommendations today. I really, really hope you enjoy some of these films. As I said before, I didn't just want to recommend all the films you already know about, like Harry Potter or whatever. I wanted to give you a selection of different films that will help you in different ways, show you lots of different dialects and accents, um, lots of different vocabulary as well. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear other recommendations as well and your reviews of any of these movies and films that you've seen. Don't forget the NordVPN offer that I mentioned in the beginning. You can get 70% off NordVPN and an additional month free by using my link nordvpn.com lucy or you can just use my code lucy. The link and the code are in the description box. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram and my Twitter and you can follow me on my personal channel where I do vlogs of my life 
on an English farm. <laughs> it's interesting for some people. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.